Hi third graders, welcome to math instructional video. In this video we'll talk about bar models. We'll be working with bar models for next two weeks so hope this helps you to improve your skills and uh, remember if you get stuck in any real world problem use this video to help you. Bar models help you to visualize the problem in a pictorial form. So when you draw a bar model this will help you to understand what's happening in the real world problem and then make the conclusion of what procedure you need to do. Now, before you go further, I want you to take a good look at this because here I'm sharing with you the important formula that you should all by now know. Remember that bar model is made out of whole and two parts. Now, if I have missing whole, the whole is unknown. I put question mark in that section. That means I have to do addition. And if one of my parts is missing, I have to do subtraction. This is something that you must know and not confuse it if you want to do really well in your test that we have next week. Another very important strategy that I would like to share with you before we dive into the bar models is that when you look at your real world problem, you have to read to understand each problem. So take your time reading the problem. You might have to even read it twice or three times. Next thing you do is highlight the words, the key words, such as more, less, fewer than, total, in all. I recommend you to highlight those words and then you will proceed and draw the appropriate model based on these keywords. So don't forget to take that step. And then of course, once you draw your bar model, you'll have to fill in all the given data just be careful where you put the numbers okay that you place them correctly and then you will interpret the model you will decide for the right procedure you'll know if you need to add or subtract depending on the formula that you already have in here I know you do so let's look at the types of bar models that we can run into when we are reading real-world problems these are the types of bar models that you will need to draw depending on what's happening so this is the first one, basic one, part whole bar model. It will look like this. And this particular bar model, as you can see, we know the parts, okay? But I don't know the whole. And so if I have a bar model like this in front of me, I know that the procedure I will do when my whole is unknown, I have to do addition. That's correct. You have to add these two parts to find out what the whole is. And of course, the answer will be bigger, right? The number has to be bigger than any of these two numbers. Right, of uh, the scenario for this problem, I'm sure you're thinking of what, what could it be, right? For example, we could say there are 320 boys and 45 girls. How many children are there in all, right? So this would be an example of your part whole bar model. I will show you another example of where we would use this part whole bar model. For example, here we have Mrs. Jones buys a cake for $15 and has $42 left. How much money did Mrs. Jones have at first? Now remember to use the strategies I told you. Go back and read it again so you can understand the problem. Again, Mrs. Jones buys a cake for $15 and has 42 left. How much money did Mrs. Jones have at first? So when I analyze, I can tell that we don't know how much she had before she spent the $15. We know she only has 42 left, but what was the total before she bought the cake? So I know that my question mark will be in the whole and um, the smaller number will go to the smaller part and the bigger number will go into the bigger part. And when I look at this bar model, I know that if my whole is unknown, I must do addition. Now let's look at another par whole bar model where you have a part missing because that could happen too. For example, I'll know that there's 547 children playing in the park and 120 of those children are boys. How many are girls? That could be an example of this bar model that I would need for that particular problem. So when I look at this bar model, my part is unknown, so the game will change. If the part is unknown, the procedure I will decide to do in this situation is subtraction that's correct you have to subtract to find out what the part is let's look at another example of a problem where we would use this part whole bar model i have a ben who has 
60 baseball cards and football cards in all. Okay, yeah, I know you, you see that keyword right there, in all, right? He has 24 football cards. How many baseball cards does he have? All right, so again, first thing what you need to do, read it again if you need to, to understand the problem and underline, highlight the keyword. I'm highlighting the word in all because that tells me that I know my total. And that is why I'm going to draw my bar model with the total number down here because I know the total. Now, of course, if I know the total, that means I should definitely know one of the parts. And one of the parts that I know is 24 football cards. Now I need to find out what is the amount of baseball cards. So I'll put a question mark right there because that's the unknown part for me in this real world problem. Okay, looking at this bar model, part is unknown. So I know based on the formula that I already have in here, I have to go ahead and do subtraction. Now, another example is a comparison bar model. Comparison bar models look like this, where you might know the total and you might know one of the parts. And then there's difference section where we put that number that has the more or less or fewer word next to it. So in this case, I could maybe invent a problem, okay, uh, that would go like this. There is 462 boys in the park and there's 137 more girls than boys in the park. How many girls is in the park? See what I did here? So I used the sentence more than, so that calls for comparison, no doubt. I am here comparing boys and girls. So the bar model looks different because it has the different section right here. And we always put the number that has the more than or fewer right in this section. So here, looking at this comparison bar model, I know the difference. I know the other part. Well, I don't know how many girls are in the park. So my whole is unknown. If my whole is unknown, the same formula applies to any of these bar models. And the procedure I will do is addition. That's correct. So I'll add these two and my answer will be there is 599 girls playing in the park. Let's look at another example of a problem where we would use comparison bar model. Now this comparison bar model, again, I know the difference, right? Grant buys 345 fruit bars, there's Grant. Now Ken buys 230 more fruit bars than Grant. Now I'm going to highlight the keywords because they're screaming for me. They're calling me to highlight them. So I'm going to underline it. And of course, when I see more than, you're comparing something. So yeah, I have to do comparison bar model. There's no way around it. So this is my comparison bar model. It has these parentheses. That means I have here my different section, right? This is where I put the difference number, the number that has the more or less or fewer. Sometimes I might not know the difference and that's okay. Um, there's no problem with that, but still I will draw comparison bar model because I'm comparing here I'm comparing the fruit bars that Grant bought and the fruit bars that Ken bought So if my whole is unknown, I have to do addition Don't forget with comparison word problems uh, where you have more than words or less than or fewer than you will be drawing this type of bar model and if your different is unknown if you have a question mark right here and you don't know how many more or less is there of boys or girls or whatever that they're comparing in your real world problem you have to do subtraction because that is just like if a part would be missing if the unknown big is missing this section right here then you will have to do addition and if you have the unknown small missing then again, you would have to do subtraction. If any of these two are missing, there's subtraction. And if this big one is missing, that is a case of addition. Okay, so if it's big missing, the big section missing, you do addition. And if any of these small ones is missing, you would do subtraction. I hope that helps you. Another example of bar model would be adding on bar model. The word problem that would call for adding on bar model could be something like this. Sean orders 75 boxes of fruit on the first day. He orders another 84 boxes of fruit on the second day. How many boxes of fruit does he order on both days? 
So you see, the keyword for me for adding on bar model is another. He orders another. So we will definitely be adding the boxes to the bar model. And so in this case, I don't know the total. I don't know how many did he order on both days. So I will have to do addition because my hole is missing. The same formula again applies to this bar model too. Taking away bar model is the last one we learned in second grade and we continue to work with these also in third grade is taking away bar model. Taking away bar model could be something like this. Bob has 110 bottles of water. He sells 28 bottles of water. That means, you know, he's going to have less, right? How many bottles of water does he have left? Yeah, I know you see those keywords. Okay, so when you sell, that means you're giving away, right? You're going to have less left. And of course, when you also see the word left, that, that means you are definitely going to be using subtraction. And your bar model will be drawn like this with an arrow going out because you are taking away this amount of bottles from your bar model. And the other part is with question mark is unknown. And so if my part is unknown, I am doing subtraction. All right, so please take a picture of this in your mind again. If you still don't have it in there recorded, please take a picture of it again. And um, this is what you're going to use and put into practice with any real world problem that you are reading. Alrighty, everyone, I hope this was helpful. Now is your turn. You have to work on your independent work write answers to these three questions in your Schoology assignment. First one is, will you add or subtract if the part is unknown in your bar model? If the part is unknown. Number two, write two keywords that help you to decide that you have to add, okay? And number three, what is the keyword that calls for comparison bar model? And this is what you have to submit to your teacher in Schoology. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. I hope you learned with me. And don't forget the formula that you're learning. It's just like when you memorize your Bible verses. You memorize them so you can apply them in your life. The same thing you have to do with the formula that I gave you in this video. Bye, everyone. God bless you.